every child of God uh, needs to examine. If God is talking about that and God is speaking on that, then we all need to examine what is our number one priority because remember what God said, that's what's going to motivate you. That's what's going to stimulate you. That's going. But if God is our number one priority, then who God is in our life should affect everyone. If God is your number one priority, your relationship is going to be different. How you develop relationships is going to be different. One of the evidence that it seems that God is not our number one priority, that it seems like that God may not be the number one priority to a lot of people who go to church today is even how they create relationships. If God is our number one priority and God says in his word, do not be unevenly yoked. What does darkness have to do with light unless you did reprove it? God states in his word that he doesn't want us to be unevenly yoked, but you'd be surprised how many people go to church and when they begin to get indulged, get engaged in relationships, situation, they don't even, they, they have no, they don't, they, as long as that person meets their so-called external qualifications or meet that which is appealing to their own flesh, uh, it's it, it, there is no assessment of where that person may be spiritually. It's just we go visually and we go by what we like and what we want. But if God is your number one priority and God is light, then light should illuminate what you're dealing with. Should cause you to be able to see different. If God is our number one priority when it comes to family and mothers and fathers and sisters and how we respond and how we act and how we deal with it, should be, and these people, you have to understand something, the, the, the relationships that we're talking about are relationships that may bring you frustration, may bring you, because we are all um, um, have fallen, in, in, in meaning in the sense that we have all been redeemed. Every Christian has to go through a process of being redeemed, accepting Jesus Christ, and going through a process of maturity and love maturity and who God is. Amen? I believe every Christian will have to come to that place where I, I want to say this, 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 uh, that to get that motivation where, what motivation? God so love. Amen? I believe every Christian, every, every son and daughter of God must understand that, that, that opening statement into Psalms 130, God so love, that they may understand um, their father's motivation and, and priority. Because I, I, I don't know that came to me that that little verse, that little, that for opening verse, God so loved. You know what I'm saying? God so loved. So you can preach God, but if you don't understand the God so loved, you can preach the word, but if you don't understand the so God so loved, then you don't understand his motivation. You don't understand his number one priority. And how that and, and within that priority, he moved and, and how somebody moved and operated and function and what stimulates and motivate them was God so loved, amen. So if I get saved, I might I, I I want someone when I get if I'm getting saved, I want someone to break down to me, preach to me from understanding God's motivation because you can preach me from the word, but if I don't understand God's motivation, I'll constantly believe when I'm going through something that God don't love me because sometimes. And God so loved. I told somebody this. I, I told someone this yesterday. This young man I met as I was, I, I found myself ministering to this young man. And I told this young man, and he said he had never saw it like that. I said, when you look at the cross, there was there's nothing appealing about what was taking place on that cross. The nails, were there, but it was a reflection of God so love. It was a manifestation of God so love. So sometimes love don't look pretty. Amen. Sometimes love don't look pretty, it don't feel pretty. Amen? But it's always good. Because it comes from God, and God, it comes from that place of good. Amen? God so, so understanding that, I don't know, that thing, that thing, that, that thing, it jumped off the page to me. God so love. The Holy Spirit just ministered to me that God so love. You know, and in that God so loved, then his church should be a reflection of God so loved. Amen? 
uh, that's the motivation in God so loved the world that he gave. The he gave part came from God so loved. Amen? So when you're giving the gospel, when you're moving, it, ha- it should come from the place where God so loved. When you're talking about under- when God is telling you to minister to somebody, watch this. You hear people say this all the time. Man, God told me to say something, and I didn't say something because and when they didn't say something because they were afraid, they rejected. But the Bible said love casts out fear because fear brings torment. So that means when a person says, well, I didn't say something that God told me to say to this person, then and that means they actually lack a maturity and love if they was in fear. Because God says that, that love casts out fear because fear brings torment. But God so loved that love casts, when, and what does that mean? What are, you, what, are you, what are you saying? What am I saying? Meaning that I know even if I'm correcting you, I'm coming from a place of God so loved. Amen. If I'm if I'm telling you not to do that, I'm coming from a place of that God so loved. So being afraid of how they may retaliate or being afraid of, you know, it's like a mom because a mom so love or a dad so love that even they know when they tell your little butt up, you're going to be like crying and going through all that. When they tell you no, you're going to be going through all that. But because mom and dad, especially I'm going to say mom and dad who is motivated by the spirit of God that God so loved, they're going to let you go through all your little emotional which name why? Because they understand that they, they, they in God so loved does not mean them allowing you to do anything and everything you want to do, especially when they know the outcome of it. Especially when love knows the outcome of something. I don't care how bad you want it. I don't care how bad you think you need it. But the bottom line is I have to stand on the safe place. I have to stand in love. And one thing about God's love, God love bears, believes, hopes, and endures. God's love does not fail. So the God, so watch this, the love that the, where, where we read God so loved the world, that well, that love does not fail. So those who grab a hold of that love are walking in that which the cannot fail. You're walking in a love that bears all. You're walking in a love that believes all. You're walking in a love that hopes all. You're walking in a love that endures all. And if you if you grasp what I'm telling you right now, you will begin to see the, 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 the dysfunction and the, the, the wickedness and the evil of the world and the immaturity and the world lacking a relationship with God, meaning lacking, lacking relationship with love. Therefore, that's why relationships in the world today, they cannot bear. They cannot believe. They cannot hope. Neither can they endure. Because as soon as storms begin to come and shake the very foundation of their emotions, their emotions catapult them to a place where I quit. I give up. I'm done. But when God says God so loved, that love has the ability to endure, to bear, to believe, and to hope. Amen? Knowing that it will not fail. So if it will not fail, it is salvation that's in it. It produces salvation through the fulfillment of the word, which is in Christ Jesus, which is Christ. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Amen. So that's why y'all hear me say, and I said this, I'm going to say this, that when somebody gets saved, I think the greatest level of growing in maturity when you get saved is to come to the realization, God, that my, my, my ideal of love is flawed. And it's evident in how I treat people. It is evident in how I love people. It is evident in how I move with people. My ideal of love is flawed. So, God, your ideal of love is perfect. So, God, help me exchange my ideal of love for your ideal of love. So I can have a perfected relationship. You know what I say perfect? I said, perfect. what is a perfected relationship? One that is whole, mature, and complete. That I can have a perfected relationship with my husband, my wife, my children, because I'm in him, I live and move and have my being. I'm learning how to love. And see, we, we love, a lot of times our idea of love is coming from an emotional perspective. And that's why it's always shifting and changing and unbalanced and unstable. How you treat me? What you do for me? What you got for me? Which how you gonna how you what what I can get out of you? 
God's love provoking what he can give to transform somebody. You understand? When we understand this, now I want to understand that. So I want to look at somebody and say, awaken by the truth. Look at somebody and say, awaken by the truth. See, when we get awakened by the truth to the true ideal of what love is, when we get awakened by the truth, we become those who have the ability to crush the lies. Amen? When we begin to be awakened by the truth, we have the ability to be what? Light in the midst of darkness. So I want to, I'm going to go there tonight in the study. I know I'm, I, I want to go up because we finished the book of Hebrews. We're going to get ready to go wherever God leads us next. But I want to go here tonight. Somebody said, look at somebody say, awakened by truth. How many of you know love will wake you up? And God's idea of love will wake you up. Amen? I want us to look at it, and I'm going to put, uh, approach it as how God gave it to me. Let's go to Acts 1. When you get there, say amen. How many of us know we have to mature past that place where it says, I love because? Y'all ain't want to. How many of us know we have to mature past that place where I love because? Amen. I love you because. I love you because. Because when your because is no longer because, then you got you hear this foolish stuff like I fell out of love with that person. I fell out of in love with that person. I fell out of in love with that person. Let's, 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 let's begin to, we're going to read at the third verse. We're going to start at the third verse, and we're going to go to the eighth verse in, book, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, on the awakening by truth. Okay, let's go ahead. Acts chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 3. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering mm -hmm. by many infallible proofs. I want you to understand this is about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who is God in the flesh. Amen. He, he, he did what? Presented himself. After he, after he was crucified and buried for three days, he rose up on the third day, amen, and he presented himself, letting you know that love don't fail. Amen. Oh, y'all better see y'all on. Come on, man. Letting you know that love does not fail. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe him shall not what? perish but have everlasting life amen his love was manifested in this that he that his that, that his son was crucified amen that but but watch this but the love was revealed that it had the ability to go through anything because what what it did um presented himself he presented himself Al amen. alive after alive suffering after the suffering see love will put you in a position where you can present yourself alive after the suffering Amen. Because love don't fail. Amen. Love has the ability to bear and endure. So after after you don't, you don't suffer, but you can present. He presented himself after he has suffered, letting them know that love can endure. But what he but what he wanted to show everybody at that time that he presented himself. Oh, love does not fail. Amen. You gave me your best shot. Say, see, the bottom line is. We get into these relationships. It ain't, it's not love. It's lust. And they fail every day. We see divorce failing. We see people being destroyed. We see people. We, we have, and, and we, we have come to the place in, in the Bible where it says men are lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. They are more lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. In other words, make me feel good. Make me feel good. Make me happy. Do all the wonderful things. But the Bible tells me he did what? Presented himself. Presented himself. After what? After his suffering. After he suffered, he presented himself. Love can, uh, Jesus, the son of God. The Bible says there's no greater love than one who would lay down his life. Amen? He laid down his life. But after love laid down his life, he presented himself. After alive. He's, uh, alive. Mm -hmm. Letting you know you can't kill love. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't stop the love of God. 
the love of God is going to be relentless to fulfill that which God has sent it to do. God watches over love that it will not return void, that it, it will fulfill that which God has established it to do. Why? Because it cannot fail. It can bear. It can believe. It can hope. It can endure. So sometimes we sit around. See, the problem, and I'm going to tell you something, and God, we, got to, we have to grasp this. The problem with some of us is some certain, certain times that we are struggling with understanding God's love and therefore causes you to struggle with understanding your salvation and the security of it. See, no. You, you're struggling with the security of your salvation because you don't understand the magnitude of love and the price that it was caused that cannot fail. Amen? God's love cannot fail. And that's why the Bible says, he who has begun a good work Love, which has begun a good work, is faithful to what? Keep you into the coming of the Lord. When you really, really believe that somebody loved you, when you really, really believe it, that they love you, then that love has the ability to keep you, strengthen you, sustain you, give you hope in an impossible situation. Amen? Amen. Have you believed when it seems unbelievable? People feel that way about lust. And it's a setup by Satan. Satan's job is to try to imitate God, but he do it with lust. And why people, so, why people are so broken, why people are so hurt, because that love could not bear. That love could not believe. That love could not endure. So what you did is you put your life and your feelings and all in. I'm going to love you and be there with you. But it failed because it was not, what, motivated or stimulated. In other words, it did not have God as his number one priority. See, the love that you felt, the love that you tried to get did not have God as his number one, did not have love as his number one priority to be able to teach you how to love in situations that it seemed impossible, seemed unbearable, seemed unforgivable. But see, if God is your number one priority, then love is teaching you and motivating you and stimulating you how to love in impossible situations. God showed that with Pat. Amen? He was showing that God purposely illustrated so you, can, you and I can see what love, what, what somebody who has what? What put God as their number one priority. How, how can I love somebody who stole my car? Stole my identity, stole my birth certificate, wrecked my car, stole my, empty my bank account. And yet when I see them, I hug them, pray for them, and forgive them. The world does not understand the love of God. And Satan cannot imitate it. And neither can false Christians. They cannot imitate the love of God. They will try to imitate signs and wonders, but they can't imitate what? The, un the unfailing, uh, the rooted, grounded love of God. And those uh, who are being, the, those that which is being pulled in by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all getting what I'm saying? And we, when you when you, when, I, when you want to grow, God, show me, teach me how to love. Show me how to love like you love. Why? So I can be, so I can have success in my relationship and how I deal with people and love people, how I forgive. That I can love them in how you love me. Because your love in loving me was unfailing. It, it, it did not fail. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, but let's go. Acts 1, 3, what we from? Let's go. That, that part right there just made me want to stop for a minute. Amen. <laughs> go ahead. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering mm -hmm. by many infallible proofs. And, there, and there's many proofs that love doesn't fail. That does not fail. Christ is infallible. Christ is infallible proof that God's love does not. Y'all better talk to me. Christ is the what? Infallible, infallible proof, proof that, that God's love, love cannot what? Fail. So when you study Christ, you should be learning about a love that cannot fail, that gives you what? Security and power to walk through anything. Christ, a study of Christ, a true study of Christ is a study of a love that cannot fail. God's love that cannot fail. Go ahead. Being seen by them during 40 days mm -hmm. and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm.
of is revealing the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Love will reveal God's way of doing things. Love, will, God's love reveals God's way of doing things. Love is patient. Love is long-suffering, forbearing. Love, the, he said revealing what the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of God is God's way. What God is king, king and do, dominion, how God operates in his, in his love, his infallible love. Jesus is what? I want y'all to get this. Jesus is what? The proof. The, the infallible. proof of God's infallible what? The proof of love. Right? love. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the proof of God's unfailing love. Amen. 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 And I want God. I, somebody, somebody already said, I want that. I want that. Somebody else said, I want that. I want that. I want to love that. Fail. I want to. I want to operate. I want to move and live and operate in a love that cannot fail. Because why? Because I've been in a whole lot of relationships and situations that fail. Amen. And I'm not talking about situations with just men and women. I'm talking about situations with mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and neighbors and work co-workers. I have been in a lot of situations where love has failed. I want to learn about a, a, a what? What is called? Yeah. A love that does not fail. Unfallible love, Infallible, right? infallible proof. Infallible proof. Unfailing proof. Amen? Mm -hmm. Of a love that cannot fail. <laughs> you are, you and I were saved by a love that could not, could not fail. So why are you sitting around talking about, am I saved for real? Is God really with me? Well, you're, and evidently, you don't understand the love that was behind that. You don't understand. If you're wondering if God is with me, is God going, can God save this person? Can God do this? Can God be there for me? Then you evidently don't understand the part where it says God so loved. <laughs> you don't understand God's true motivation behind what he do. Because if you did, you wouldn't allow the enemy to have you questioning, can God do? Amen. You won't be worried about if God can do. Or is God love going to bring me through this? Amen? Amen. My God. My God. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And being assembled together with them. Mm -hmm. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but to wait for the promise of the Father, mm -hmm. which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, mm -hmm. but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not many days from now. Say be, it, say be baptized with the what? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's going to bring all things into remembrance of who? Of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The infallible. The unfailing, proof. Infallible, um, uh, infallible proof. Proof of God's love. The Holy Spirit going to bring anything, everything into remembrance. Y'all better get this. Going to bring everything into remembrance of Jesus Christ, who is what? Say it again. The infallible proof of God's love. The infallible proof of God's love. The Holy Spirit going to be telling you, God love you. God got you. God ain't trying to throw you away. God ain't done with you. He's going to bring you in alignment with the truth of where God so loved. He's the evidence of God so loving. Amen? Amen. Infallible proof of God's love. Amen? Amen. People love may fail. God's love does not. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, I want to, let me read this to you so you can see how powerful that God's love is. First, I'm going to read this. First, uh, um, first John, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse says this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. See, the Bible says you got to be born again. 
you got to be born again, amen, of Christ, right? That brings you to that place to be born again in the love of God. You know what's interesting? That the way God initially designed it with a man and a woman and giving children, that it was supposed to be with a husband and a wife, and that child was supposed to be a, a manifestation of their love toward one another, an extension of life. It's only when children begin, it's only when men and women of God, uh, men and women who are not of God, or operate, where children are not a blessing, where they are a hindrance. So it kind of, again, shows us where we are with love in this nation, and it shows us all where we are with God, where we are bored aboard where we where we make laws to destroy the seed because why they're not being produced within what the motivation or stimulation of love they're being produced out of lust and since they're produced out of lust since your desire is stronger for your own success that child becomes a nuisance to your plan so it becomes something that let's get rid of. But I love what he, I'm just, I'm just something, I just want to show you something. He says, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Don't talk about you know God if you don't know love. If you don't, now I'm not talking about your love, I'm talking about God's love, which was what? Was the infall Jesus was what? Jesus Christ, Christ was the, the what? Infallible proof of God's love. Mm. He says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. love. Verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. In this, what I'm about to read to you, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live, that we might live through him. God, God says, my love was manifested. Remember, we, remember I told you, John 3, 6, it says, God so loved. His love was manifested in that what? He sent his only begotten son in the world that we might what? Live through him. That life may be birthed through him. Through what? Through love. That life may be birthed through love. Through a love of a son, through a love of a son who loved his father so much that he obeyed him even to death. Your salvation was birthed through love, not through your works, but through the love of God. Satan's job is to convince you that God really don't love you. And then Satan's job is to preach a gospel that God's love is basically manifested on what the world's concept is, what somebody give you. Meaning is, if they buy you this, the world's idea of love is, if I buy me this, buy me that, do this for me, give me this. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Oh, I feel they really love me because why they take me to dinner. They do all the things that I, that feed my flesh. But Jesus showed that God's love was manifested through obedience. Even in a situation that what? Where love was ushering him to sacrifice himself. That love was ushering him to sacrifice himself. That those who believe in him may have life because God wanted us to see Jesus Christ, which is the infallible proof of God's love. And the Bible says that he did what when he rose up? He did what? Ooh, presented himself alive. He presented himself. Love presented himself alive after going through all that. Can you go through something and present yourself alive? Can God take you through you some suffering and you present and God then show that you are alive in Christ Jesus? 
Amen. Just something to think about. Let's, let's, uh, which, which, which verse? Verse six. Go here. Therefore, when they had come together, mm -hmm. they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons, mm -hmm. which the father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Say somebody need to be witnessing the love of God in your life. Somebody need to be witnessing the love of God in your life. Somebody need to be witnessing the love of God in your life. When Pat stood up here and began to give his testimony, we were witnessing the love of God operating in his life. If God is our number one priority, then somebody should be able to testify about the love of God operating in your life. Amen. Amen. It's easy to forgive. You know, when you think you're crazy about somebody, but can you forgive somebody who really did you dirty? Can someone witness the power of the Holy Spirit that's bringing into remembrance Christ, who is God's what? Infallible proof. Of God's love. Can someone witness the Christ in you and witness God's what? Infallible proof of God's love. Beat, slap, spit on, nail. The infallible proof of God's love toward us. Can somebody witness the infallible proof that Christ is abiding through you? They, they fired you. They did you dirty, but yet you, you reveal, you come through as one who's still alive Presented in Christ. Alive. You come through as one who reveals that you are still alive and functioning and operating in who Christ is. Satan can't imitate that. Amen. He can't duplicate that. Amen. Amen. Okay. Go, go ahead. That was number eight, verse eight. Um, yeah, but I didn't finish. Okay, go ahead and finish. Um, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Hmm. The world need to witness this love in Jerusalem, Judea. I'm going to put it this way. In your home. He's talking to the disciples. He's saying Jerusalem first, the home base. Are people witnessing in your home God's what? Infallible proof of God's love. Hmm. And I just want to give a definition for it. infallible mm -hmm. is incapable of making mistakes mm -hmm. or being wrong. Error free. Error free. Perfect love. So Jesus is say break it that way. Jesus is what God's love. He's what? He's incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. And revealing what? The proof of God's love. Let's say it again. <laughs> Let's say it again. Jesus Christ is incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. He's error free. He is the infallible proof of God's love. He's revealing to us what God's love looked like. So how is it you studying him and yet you're not and we're called to imitate him and yet nobody see God's love. You want God's power without God's love. You don't know God's motivation. God's so love is his motivation. God's so love. So God's so love is to bear, believe, hope and endure. We meet people and it's funny how you get in relationships with people and you think that God, God sent you to this church. He sent you to and you say, no. And you think he's not going to test your ability to walk in his love. Mm -hmm. See, we believe love is, the world ideal of love is to present a great image on the outside. But God says, I, you can't fool me by the outside of your trying to present your ideal of what love is. Because I'm looking at your heart. 
And if I'm not hidden at your, in your heart as your number one priority, then you're not going to be motivated by my love. You're going to be motivated by pleasure, which you're going to interpret as love. And as soon as somebody put a dent in your pleasure or put a dent in what makes you feel good or happy or joyful, all of a sudden you, ain't, you have no love to operate in it at all. Hmm. That was eight, right? Yeah. We see he going, he said, I'm going to give you power, right? He said, remember, say, it's time to awaken it by truth. We have a question online. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and speak. Are they trying to speak? Hello, good evening. Hello, Can you hear evening. me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had a question Hello. because. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I had a question because you said that someone ought to see. You said someone ought to see. Is someone witnessing um, of you? the love of God, right? Um, so my question to that, even like how you brought up Pat, right? So mm -hmm. let's say um, that young man has to go to jail for what he did. You know, he committed a crime. That is the law of the land, right? So what if that person turns around and their testimony about Pat is no longer like, oh, that guy's loving because he testified against me in court or he had to put, you know, call the cops on me because of what I did, you know? Um, because I just, I, I found myself in situations where like, sometimes I feel like I'm being manipulated into something. And then as soon as you don't do what the person wants, it's like, oh, well, you call yourself a Christian. And um, sometimes I feel like because the world doesn't really know the love of God, they wouldn't be able to accurately be like, oh, this, this is them showing me that even if it comes with like a no or it does things don't you know what I'm trying to say things don't work out the same way because you know that happens a lot so I just wanted to know like well how would you assess that or is that for other people to assess or are you saying like what you just said like God knows like the person's heart but then even that could be dangerous so I just wanted to ask that question you're just because when someone's whisk, whip, they can be witnessing something and interpreting it, the question is, it's not about how they interpret it, they still, they witness it. In other words, if you witness a crime, you may want to have all these different interpretations of it, it's still a crime. In other words, it's still what it is. When I say, when God is saying, when I'm saying witness something, meaning that it's, you know what you gave them. You, know, like the woman who said, let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. How some of them interpret like boom, 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 boom. It don't matter. She knows she was being a witness, telling a testimony of what God has said, which is true. And they are witnessing it. So therefore, they may not understand it at that moment. They may not understand it for a period of time. But the bottom line is a seed in which they are, they are witnessing. Remember now, we said awakened by truth. What they are witnessing is a seed of truth that's being planted. Now, one person going to water, one gonna plant, but eventually they're going to come to the understanding if it's God's will to give increase of what they have saw. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, come on. Why she's, many people, you could tell somebody the truth. Let me say this to you. Many people might not accept that truth or believe that truth or want that truth. It doesn't change the fact it's the truth. Go, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, 
to share, um, I've told my testimony in here a couple of times about how both of my sisters have slept with my ex, uh, but he wasn't an ex at the time. You know, you come in the house and find him in bed and things like that craziness. But the, the thing that I was, I wanted to share was even in all of that, when um, even this week as you were, um, you had us reflect back on uh, God being our priority and everything. And I was thinking, I was like, man, because my niece, one of my sister's kids had passed away and to the end, uh, today actually was her, is, yeah, Sunday was her birthday. But um, Jasmine was like, oh yeah, we need to pray for my sister and keep her in prayer and reach out to her. But I was thinking, I was like, God is so amazing and it's his infallible love that we have um, brought into our hearts because all our family knew what was going on. This is from when Jazz was little and look at her love for the, the sisters today. They, they, they're not treated no different than I would treat any of you, you know, just because I love God and I know the, the right from wrong in those situations and they have been forgiven and I've told them that and I've showed them that, but, um, also, none of that would have been, is it anything I've done? I know it's only because of God and the change of God. But it's just amazing when I think of like my daughters, how they treat them, knowing what they did, but yet and still they forgive them. And even with Adina's question, um, there's been times throughout our family history where um, my sisters didn't have money and I and if I had it, you know, I would have to pay their rent or their bills or whatever. But sometimes I wouldn't tell them that I was giving them the money. I would do it my through my mom or whatever. But it was still a witness even for my mom to see her daughter display something that she did she couldn't teach me, you know, how to love in that way. But you know, it just I rejoice because I know that that any behavior <laughs> that is right that doesn't result in you getting cussed out is is only god you know amen. so amen amen i want to say this too i think that was a good question i want to say this god is revealing in scripture and in action his love many people don't accept their love and turn and go away. It doesn't change the fact that the love that he's presenting is a witness of what he has done and an opportunity for you to receive the reward of that opportunity. But love, love is not going to assist on its own. Love is not going to make you accept it, but it's not going to conform. This is what I want you to understand too, what's, what's going on in this perverted gospel today. It's not going to, it's not going to conform to something that is not. Love is not going to conform to something that's not to win people. It's not going, in other words, love is not going to conform to being a lie to win people. It's not going to conform to something that is wicked and evil and trickery and lies to win people. Why? Love doesn't have to. Remember I told you the name of this sermon would be Awakened by Truth because truth will eventually, because it is truth, it's unchangeable and it will eventually, either you're going to accept that truth or be crushed by it. Because if it is truth, you're going to accept it and begin to get on the uh, get on the ride of where it's taking you or reject it and be crushed by the truth because the truth is not going to change. The truth of God does not change. Let me tell you, I, I really want us to get this. The truth of God does not change because of your intellectual, because of your customs, because of what you think you feel and what you think you want and what you think and how it is. No, God's truth is not going to change. When he says something, he means it as truth, and it's going to be truth. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, beautiful people. <laughs> um, Patrick said um, the detectives did call and ask him if he wanted to press charge, and he said no. So that's what, so the evidence, and even and I say this, even if that guy continues a life of crime, when he stands before God's judgment seat, he will never be able to say that God did not show him the truth. 
He would never be able to say he did not witness God's love and God's truth. See, no one will. You will not be able to say, I did not witness it. Just because you chose not to receive it don't mean you didn't witness it. Amen. And that's why God has an issue. Let me tell you what God has an issue with. When those who are saved bring his name as a reproach among the unsaved. In other words, when we function and live, not all that crap, when you live like live, and yet among the unsaved, the way you act, you bring God, you bring love as a reproach among them. Because why? If you create an atmosphere of love, even someone that has the hardest heart, when they walk into that atmosphere, it's going to be touched by it. But if you create an atmosphere of falsehood and, 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 and this and that, people are going to be touched by that. It's nothing more, it's nothing more terrible than to think somebody loves you when they really just want to use you. Amen? Come on. And while she's coming, read the word infall un, uh, infallible again, the definition of it. Because we need to understand if God's love, if Jesus Christ is God's love toward, manifested toward us, right? And it's infallible. This love is what? Read it. Incapable of making mistakes. It's incapable of making mistakes. My God, the word of God is incapable of making mistakes. Error free. It's error free. The word of God is error free. Why? Because it's motivated by true love, by pure Amen? Unconditional love. Our words <clears throat> are not infallible. We often say things we know we're not going to do. And when you don't do what you say, people can't trust your love. But God says, you can trust my love because I do exactly what I say. She said something about her question. It was um, manipulating the people. Can you repeat your question? Because I, I want to answer it right, if you don't mind. Because you said something about manipulative people. Um, I no, I think my point was in um, in a lot of times, like, to people in the world, let's say they want you to do something or don't do something, right? And then the moment you say no, because they don't actually know what the love is, of God is, which includes justice, which includes mercy, which includes truth and grace, right? But when you give them that no, it's like, um, since the world doesn't know the love of God, they go, well, you're not being loving towards me because in the world, I think we interpret love as, oh, you're, you're pleasing me in this moment. You're doing what I want and therefore you're being loving. But if you don't do what they want, it's almost like, um, you know, a, a door to be manipulated because I've, I've had a, a tough times telling people no to, and I don't mean things that are sinful. I mean, things that oh, will this person find me kind? Will this person find me loving if I say no to something that I probably just can't do at the time? You know what I mean? I've had a hard time with that. Um, so that was my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, what I was thinking, it was like discernment. Like, realize that certain people have don't have the knowledge for, um, like you said, they don't know what God love is. And what keeps bringing up to my mind is Jesus knowing that he was going to be betrayed. I don't know why, but it's, you still have to find a way in your heart to like, you know, understand, okay, yeah, they don't know the knowledge of God. And because of that, like to give them grace. And that's where the love come from too. It's just, you don't have to be hard in a way, if that makes sense. It, I, does it, does yeah, it make sense? Yeah, I think, no. No, it does make sense. What you're saying is that, I think what you're saying is most likely you're the example of what that ideal of love is to yeah. that people who don't know. Mm -hmm. You're an example. So the way you conduct yourself, the way you move, live, and operate, you conduct yourself. And I think grace also, you know, yeah, the grace of God. I think also what Adina is saying is that there are people that are going to manipulate and operate. But watch this. But when somebody manipulate and operate, 
What does that have to do with you operating in the love of God? Yeah. In other words, if that person doesn't like because you said no, your response still must be the love of God. Amen. Yes, you must. Yeah, yeah, that, no, yes, yeah, yes, it, it can. It can still be no. In other words, yes, be, uh, loving somebody don't always mean doing what they want you to do. Loving somebody doesn't mean always operating or functioning in a way that may be pleasing unto them. Loving somebody is always, remember we said, who is our number one priority? Loving someone is making sure that you're doing something always that's pleasing to God. Now, let me tell you, I may not always do something pleasing to you, but I better make doggone sure what motivates me is it's pleasing to God. If I do what pleasing to God, how, how you act or don't act, they still see God. You know what I'm saying? They're still going to see God. Because if God tells me not to do this, I'm not going to do this. You know what I'm saying? If God, and, and me not doing this, they may not understand at that moment, but I'm still functioning in love. I'm still functioning in love if God tells me not to do this. If God tells me to do it. Like, let me get an example. It's like some of us may say, I don't, God told you to go rebuke somebody. Right? You was like, I'm not going to rebuke that person. I'm afraid this and that. You don't realize what God is asking you to do is an act of love. No. No, come on. Come on. Check, check. No, I was going to say a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times that's actually um, the, what's going to deliver the person um, when, you, when you get that no. Mm -hmm. And especially as people, um, a lot of times, um, it isn't a church too, but just a people, like we have like a self-entitled spirit and like we um, act like it's a curse word when we hear the word no. <laughs> so like let's say um, whether it's like the man of God or the men of God mm -hmm. and like well oh these are our fathers we, we love them we love them and um, for example can we do this can we do this in the church um, I don't think that's something we should be doing right now <laughs> uh, you know and you act like because he said no it's like you like the baby in you like comes out or let's say you're in a relationship and your husband and you're a woman of God and God's leading them, and it's not at the time God may not be leading the God to to see the man of God to see what you're um asking or or where the situation is, and you take that as uh, as if it's a curse word because God's not leading him in direction. But a lot of times, and in some cases, even in that example, in some cases it could have been God that God told you, but you just gotta trust God and wait. And a lot of times of God using that men or the situation, I'm just using as an example, to say no to reveal what's inside of you. And um, even in that example, let's say um, the guy went to jail. Because a lot of times, not saying this is going to happen to him, but a lot of times when a person's in that state, they, you know, even though he had that encounter, he probably, as we speak right now, he might be out there doing the same thing. But he had that encounter. And down the line, he may keep on persisting and God said, okay, now it's time for you to, you know, bear some, some form of judgment. I'm not going to kill you necessarily, but you might have to go to jail or this, that, and the third. We don't know his end story because years down the line, he himself will come and testify and say, oh, you know, back in my crazy state, um, I was wild out. And at one point, this guy, you know, he showed me the mercy and the love of God. God talked to me. A lot of times, I know personally I can say me in a crazy, wild state, God revealed himself to me. That still didn't stop me from doing what I was going to do. Amen? <laughs> and God still, so, but a lot of times, a lot of times God has to let a person, that person has to get that no or get some of consequences or get that situation. Um, and, you know, and it's actually a great thing. It's actually the love and the power of God. So I just want to add that. That's beautiful. Also understanding, understanding that, it softened the ground. It might not have got you changed, but it softened the ground to what God wants to do. I don't, I'm not going to pretend as if I know God's total process on how to get everybody to be in a position to receive. But God is effective in what he does. Love is effective in what he does. Go ahead.
Hello. Hello. Uh, y'all hear me? Yep. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I was gonna say. Um. Um. Even. Um. I think. Um. Uh. One thing that. Um. That stands out to me. Um. Even as I hear, which is so like powerful. And, like what I grab onto is. Um. And from knowing, I think saying one thing too is. Um. They touched on it. We have the knowledge that the world don't have. We have the under we have the word of God. We have an understanding of what love is. The world doesn't, right? So I think um even like when I hear like the infallible like something that's like um like even though we the word of God says the word of God also says um love does not fail. It's 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 an understanding that we have that okay if we do what God is telling us to do if we do the word of God we're moving in love, and then something Kenley said of even like which is true is that love doesn't fail. So if we move in love. We are the tool that God is trying to use to deliver someone. We are the tool that God is trying to use to reveal the love of God to someone. And that could be in many different ways. That could be in many different ways. But I think like just ending it with like learning how to hold on to the word of God and knowing that it's the truth. Why well, I say that? Because no matter who you are, you're going to experience it. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, just walking in Christ, or you eventually it's gonna come to you. What's gonna come to you is that you're gonna be doing things that's gonna be in love, and you're gonna encounter people that's gonna take it as you not loving them. But in the end, eventually they always come to the point of they will see the love of God. Like whether sooner or later, because that's just that that the that's the love of God. God reveals his love to people. That's his his heart is to reveal his love to people, to the lost. So it, it's not about like, I, I think like even to Odino saying like, I, I learned to like, as much as, I mean, you're going to, you're going to feel it no matter what, as much as you may feel it a certain way, you learn to do whatever God is telling you to do, no matter who, friend, family, enemy, mom, dad, no matter how they may look at you or perceive, they look at you because you know that no matter what, that this is the love of God being revealed to them. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like it to them. They may want you, they may want you, okay, can you do this for me? It's like, okay, no, I can't do this for you. And God's like, no, don't, don't do that for them. It's like, they don't understand it and they may feel a certain way, but we don't hold on to what we feel. We go by, like the Bible says, we don't walk by sight. Well, we walk by faith. We walk by faith. We don't go by to what we feel. We go by by faith. And we know the word of God. The word of God is that God is love. Not that he love, but God is love. So when we do what love is telling us to do, even if it says, okay, don't do this for that person. Like, we may not understand why or, or why God is ultimately saying that, but we know ultimately it's from a place of love. So saying that to say, like, I I I just uh, learned to like even grabbing from it is like even that key word um you know God had apostle just keep bringing up the infallible it's like un it's 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 un it's it's not it's it's not making an error it's unerrable it's it's perfect it's there's no errors in it. it his love there's no errors in it so I I, I just like grab onto that to be like okay I may not know what God is doing fully I may not know like what's like what's going on but I know that if God is is saying to do it and this is his word i know that it's love and the outcome is it's it's fruitful so does it can can i hold on let me let me read this first let me read this i want to just read it for you i'm going back what i said beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love in this was manifested the love of God toward us, toward us. His love was manifested toward, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein, watch this, herein is love. Not that we loved God. See, God is acting, operating in love, but it wasn't based on the fact that we loved him. Amen. And that's what Adina, that's what saying. It was never based on the fact that we loved him. But but God herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. In other words, God's actions was based on him loving. 
We ain't love him. It was not you love me. I'm a love because you love me. I'm gonna love you back. You know, it, we didn't love God. So God is trying to te God is teaching through the Holy Spirit. Because remember now, the Bible says when you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to be a witness. You are, what is a witness? You're testifying because if you receive the Holy Spirit, you are sealed by the Spirit of God. Then your testimony is that there's a love that can save the lost. Your life is a reflection of God's love being able to say because you are actually saved by God's love. So your witness is God loved me to save me. That's what grace was. You didn't do anything. You and I did not love God. God saved you through sin and his son because he loved us. So God says, if you're going to have my spirit and be a witness of me, then you're going to have to be before people who don't love you. But I'm, you're going to have to show them what my love look like. You're like, what? Yeah, you're going to have to show them what my love look like. Yeah, they're going to curse you out. They're going to be rude. They might talk about leaving you. They might talk about this, whatever. But I want you to, to, to be a witness to them of the love that saved you. And that's why the woman at the well, she said, let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. I witnessed some. I witnessed a love that saw me, but was, watch this, but was willing to offer me living water. That was willing to offer me that which would heal me and reveal to me what true love was. Because she, that's why Jesus had to say to her, where's your husband? She said, I have none. He said, you answer truthfully. She said, she had five, she had five husbands and she, she said, I have none. She said, he said, you have answered truthfully. You had five and the one you're with now is not your husband. And she said, so what was he saying? I'm revealing to you your warped an ideal concept of what you thought love was that had you keep going to and that's why she said lord give me this water that i i love this part right here. she said give me this water so i won't have to come here no more what is it what is what was she actually saying that we need to understand god give me that living water of your love that i don't have to keep going back to those places where false love makes me feel like I'm feel that I don't have to keep going back to the place where I'm laying on my back where I don't have to keep going back to the place where I'm drinking where I'm going to have to keep going back to the place where I'm seeking where we, because you know we have a saying looking for love in all the wrong places well will you encounter God's love hopefully we will say what the woman at the well said when you get that living water which is the spirit of God the Holy Spirit that's caused you to be a witness now that you have that spirit of God and you are filled you don't need it now she says Give me that. Give me that water that I don't have to come back to here and get something temporarily feeling my thirst. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going from man to man to man temporarily feeling my thirst. I'm going thinking money. I want all the money temporarily feeling my thirst. Give me your spirit. God, fill me that I no longer have to seek those things that temporary. That's why she said that I don't want to have to come back here. Give me that water because her coming there also was an illustration of her being number one. She was isolated. The sin she made her by because back then a woman would not go to the well by her. In their traditions, a woman would not go to the well by herself. She would go with the rest of the women, but she came by herself. She was isolated, broken, and hurt. She said, give me that water that I don't have to come back here by myself. Give Give me that water that I don't have to feel alone by anymore. Give me myself, I don't have to feel ashamed no more. Give me that, you have to understand, her coming to that well meant all those things to her. But she said, give me that water that I don't have to come be in this position. And that's why we need to preach Christ the right way. Because when we preach the right way, he becomes the answer to that place where you were empty and where you were seeking love in places that kept you more empty, that kept you more bound, that kept, because Satan always wants to give you a temporary feeling. A feel, a temporary feel of, but it's temporary. And I'm going to show you, come on, I want you to say, then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And then we're going to, you know, ask more questions and let her, she's, she's next. Let her go. I want to show you this. Uh, I'm going to let you go, but let me, let me show this first. Go ahead. Come on, come on. Just uh, kind of piggying off of what Gamal was saying and if the outcome of Pat's situation was true, based off Adina's question, something that God was giving me is, it's not going to always feel good to love, to walk in love, and it's also not going to always feel good to accept love. But is is um, the act of God, like the fact that he's getting the glory out of the situation that matter at the end of the day. So if that guy would have got locked up or whatever the case may be, if he would still, even though it didn't feel good and, you know, making assumptions of what Pat did, Accepting the fact that love that he was presented, God's love is what would have mattered because that would have 
gave God the glory. And to give him the opportunity to receive the most ultimate gift of God, which is eternal life. No matter if he goes to jail, Jesus said in Acts, turn him over to Satan that he might be saved. It wasn't going to be feeling good turning him over to Satan, this and that and this and that. But that action was going to lead him to where his soul gets saved. That's the ultimate gift of God's love, that your soul be saved. I'm a, I, I want prophet to go, but I want, I want to say this too because I want to kind of illustrate. Go to Ephesians 5 for a minute and just read 14 and 17. Then prophet, you come up out there, please. I want to read this because I kind of... It kind of I want us to be speaking, but I want word. That's why I went back to read this. I want word to show you that this is not something we're talking about. It's in the Bible. Ephesians, we are four, Ephesians 5, 14. Mm -hmm. 14 to 17. Ephesians chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 14. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Now, see, if you got the Holy Spirit, you're going to have that that's what's guiding you in all truth, right? You have the Spirit waking you. It's going to what? Wake you up, illuminate you, cause you to awake up to what God's ideal of true love is. Go ahead. Awake, you who sleep. Mm -hmm. Arise from the dead. Arise from what? The dead. Say it again. Arise from, from the, the dead. dead. See, the Holy Spirit, this, that's the spirit of life. It brought you from a place. We were all dead in our sins. Jesus came to awake us from that day by what? Paying the penalty of our sins that we may have the righteousness of God. We came from death into life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Awake from your sin. Awake from the false ideal of what you thought love was. And let me show you through Christ. You've now been awakened to see what true love is. Keep going. And Christ will give you light. Christ going to give you what? Light. light. Go ahead. Verse 15. See then that you walk cir circumspectly. Mm -hmm. Not as fools, but as wise, mm -hmm. redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is a dispensation, but be filled with the spirit. Be, be what? Filled with, with the spirit. spirit. Don't use a substitute. Don't be filled with drunk with wine. In other words, don't be overtaken with something that has you. Wine, when you're drunk, when you wine. What is it, why, why did he use the illustration drunk with wine? Because when you are drunk, you are under the influence of something. You can be drunk with lust. You can be drunk with greed. He said, do not be drunk with wine, or but what? Be filled with what? The Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's bringing you. That means be filled with the love of God, with bringing you to remembrance the word of God, the love of God, who God is, that all what God has done for you. Amen? Because he is the one who awakened you. What Jesus did on that cross, awakening you from death. Like he paid the ultimate price when we for our sins and brought you from death into eternal life. Amen? So don't be drunk with wine. In other words, it, 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 the, what what he would say to the woman at the well, she was drunk with looking for men. She thought if I had the right man, come on, the woman had five husbands. She was trying to find security. She was trying to find hope. She was trying to find peace in men. And she had five, and then she had one that wasn't her the husband at that point. And Jesus had to, he pointed out the work, love pointed out that point, because why? That's where her hope was. That's what it was. She could be able to say, I was looking. She'll say the same thing we saying today. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. But how many know that day she encountered God's love for real? She encountered that what kind of love? Infallible. Love. Error free. <laughs> Error free, a love of God who had to reveal to her where she was going and that the whole that whole conversation was about letting her know that you know what you ain't gonna have to go back there for no more trying to find love no more because you have encountered love and someone who can see your faults but see what you really needed you needed me to give you that living water you need Christ we need to preach the gospel where people understand they need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as your Savior as that living water to Fill you from that emptiness in them places that you have been trying to find love and trying to find affection, trying to find somebody who make you feel like you're valuable. It's in the one who designed you. Amen. I foreknew you, predestined you to be conformed into the image of my son. It makes sense because in the beginning, he said, let us create man in the image and likeness of God. Jesus is the image. And when you accept him, not wine, but be Filled with the Holy Spirit that empower you to be a witness, amen, of the love of God that saves you and me from that falsehood, that lie that we thought. That, that's why he says, that's why he says, awake by truth. 
he, the Holy Spirit will guide you in our truth. It will wake you from the lie that you and I thought, if we accomplish this, if we have this, if we do this, if we have this specific woman looking like this, if we have this man like this, then we're going to have the ultimate feeling loved and needed and wanted. And God says, that comes from me. That comes out of me. Come on, bro. Did y'all get it? Mm -hmm. That comes out of me. And when you preach anything outside of that, you are preaching a false doctrine. It comes out of accepting who Christ is. Amen. We're talking about love tonight, right? And I feel led to share this situation that I had um, happen. Um, Amber was there. She really didn't know the background story of what happened. And, we, and so when you think of, when you do the words, the word of God says, love keeps no record of evils. That's what it say, right? That's what the word says. Okay. So there should be corresponding actions to show if you say you walking in love in every situation. I'm going to say that again. There should be corresponding actions to show when you say you forgive somebody. And God will test you to show you where you really are if you have forgiven somebody. Because God will allow somebody who did you wrong, did something that was deemed as evil, and have you in their midst. And, but you are commanded by God not by myself or some Bible apostle is saying, the Bible says you That's owe everybody word. love. That's the commandment by God. It's not a suggestion for you to do. So when you and I don't do it, we're not pleasing God. And that's not acceptable or okay for us not to walk in love in every situation. Because the Bible says God is love. Yeah. So how can God be love and then we don't display it, then we're, then we're being fake and phony and not real. I know that we all at different places in, in when I love, but we do have to come up to the measure and stick to what it says. I can't, or Apostle can't say, well, it's all right, you know, you, 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 know uh, you, you, you don't have to get up to the place where it said love keeps no record of evil. You don't have to get to the place where it said love never stops because it's okay. I understand. No, you do have to come up there. You may not be there today, but you do have to come up there. The Bible says love keeps no record of evils. The Bible says you have to practice righteousness. You have to work on that. If you, if you want to be pleasing to God, because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So watch this. Here it goes. I had a situation when I was in college. My head coach, he was a premier NFL coach to come. And what I mean by that is he was well sought after as someone they wanted him to become an NFL coach. So anybody knows that if you're trying to make it to the NFL, you might want to be nice to him if you're trying to go, right? That, that, make, that, that makes sense, right? If you're trying to go to the NFL, this coach is known as one of the well, the sought after coaches. So if you be nice to him or do whatever he say, it's a good chance he might, you know, look out for you, right? Okay. So I got injured. And we were trying to win national championships back to back. So I injured my elbow. So our coach was upset that I injured my elbow. I was like, what you mean? But I said, okay, you know, he upset. It's the moment. He did the moment. Okay, whatever. So we make it all the way to the championship where we have the potential to win back to back. And this could solidify his spot in the NFL as a head coach. So all coaches that are good coaches, they want their best players on the field so they could, so they could put their team in the best position to win the game. So I'm injured. So I was wondering, like, hey, why, you know, why am I going to the bowl game? I'm injured. Let me just, let me just stay to the crib and watch the game. Won't you? you know, get ready for next year. So I'm, they said, well, we want you to come to the game. I said, okay, well. To the game, what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna watch on the sideline, waste time. I said, okay. So I get, so I'm healing up for my injury, and the trainer come down. I'm I'm, in, I'm on, the, on the field, like you know, just doing a little stuff, trying to heal up from my injury, getting ready for next year. We are getting ready to play the bowl game. I'm not. I'm, I'm for the mind saying I'm not going. I'm not playing. So here it goes. The trainer come down. So let's do some little drills. So that's okay. Let's do some drills. Stuff that we had never done before. So I'm doing a little drills, 
And then all of a sudden, my arm swelled up. I said, well, dang, my arm swelled up. It's okay. Well, you know, it's still healing up, so it's all right. And all of a sudden, he disappears. I said, what? where are you going? He went upstairs and came back. He came back running down, running downstairs, sweating. Oh, we, we, we got to get you ready for, uh, for the game. I said, get me ready for the game. How? He said, look at my arm. He said, and he, he just, that's all he said. And then he was gone. So, okay, I'm on the plane getting ready to go to the bowl game. So the head coach, he's sitting at the front of the door of the plane when you first get on. He said, Rudy, you going to um, think about going out there on the plane? I said, nah, coach. He said, oh. He gave me his look like, oh, okay. You're not going to go, okay. I said, nah, I'm going. And walked on to my seat. So now watch this. Everybody knows if you go to the University of Miami, you're not going for no education. Even though I got my degree, but I'm just saying that's not what you're going for back in the day. You're going so you can go to the NFL. So you're going to do what you need to say. You're going to do what you need to do and say what you need to say so you can make it to your goal. So here it goes because I said no to the coach. He said, I'm, okay, I'm going to deal with you. So the next following year come along, I was supposed to be, was, I was already uh, uh, preseason all-conference that year. It made, made all first team all-conference. So I was supposed to be, uh, if, if I would have played, it was supposed to be, I was supposed to be preseason All-American. All, so everything was supposed to go smooth while I can go straight on track to the NFL. But because I said no, he said, I'm going to get you. So what he did was he made sure that everybody knew, okay, we don't have no returning starters. He's not coming back. Like, so, he, so they put us in the publications. We're like, who's going to be the preseason this and other? He made for the publication that we don't have none. I'm like, what you mean I'm still here? So that's okay. I see where this is going. So long, long, long story short, Everything, he did a lot of things to make sure that, that the dream didn't happen. I did go for the little something, something, something. That was to God, to God allowed me to go, amen. But I brought that up to say he did a lot of things to stop it from being what I wanted it to be. But because love keeps no record of evils, I had to let that go. So now, I say I let it go. I say I understood that in reality, as a man of God, that nobody can stop us from doing something that God wants. So obviously, it was really in its totality, which it was, I, I'm going to that story, it was God. Now, I don't want it to go this way. But nevertheless, to me in my heart, in that mind, at that time, it was, he stopped me. He messed up my dream. He halted it. It, it, it. Like I said, I did play, but it wasn't how I wanted because it, but it was God's will. But at the time, I didn't see it that way. But here it goes. We we would like, every now and then we would go to the um to the games to like the to the to the games now. The old players would go to the games. And so he would never come to the games because he was at, actually he he left the school and went to another college. And so, but he was, you know, this was a, our legendary team, da, da 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 So they wanted to honor him, I guess, that particular time. I didn't know. So he come to the game, up to like the little reunion thing, like we, they was all, we all supposed to meet at a restaurant or whatever, whatever. So, but because I allow God to do something in my heart where I'm intentional, where no matter what situation I get into with anybody, I want to do love because it doesn't feel good when you have an art in your heart for somebody. It don't feel good. You can't, when you see them, you got to walk sideways. You feel icky inside. I don't like that. I love to walk in love. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I love to walk in love because I feel good because now watch this. Let me say this. Love is not natural. Love is supernatural. You cannot in your own self, our own, because uh, 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 we were born in this shape of iniquity, because of that, we cannot just do that with our, on our own. But because God is inside of us, we have the ability to love the same way Christ did. So I know a lot of times we're talking about we have, those, we have the same type of faith to move minds like Christ. That we all said it, right? I, had the faith, I got the faith of God. Yeah, you do, but you got the love of God too. To love the way that he did. What do I mean by the way that he did? His bride, the Pharisees, that was his bride. They paid the Romans to torture him and beat him. 
And when it was all said and done, one of, the, one of the Roman soldiers heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What you mean forgive? Forgive the, forgive the, the, uh, the, the, the Roman soldiers who did it and forgive the Pharisees and Sadducees who, who paid them to do it? Yes! That same type of love is in you and I. So how you and I can't forgive people for doing things that are wrong, we don't do it because we don't want to. But again, I want to do love. I want to do love. I feel good because I do love. No matter what was said and done. I didn't say I was right about the situation, but if somebody did something wrong to me, I'm going to forgive them. Because I want to do love. I don't want to hold something in my heart. It doesn't feel good. And it doesn't please God. And you could possibly delay yourself from receiving something that God want to add to your life. We know it's not, about, not, the, not the number one thing. But you could delay yourself because you're not walking in love. The Bible says, I will not hold no good thing to those who walk up right before me. And an example of that, not the only one, is you walking in love. And you could possibly bust hell wide open because you do not want to forgive and let go. The Bible clearly says, if you don't forgive, he ain't going to forgive you. You're not going to violate the word. I don't care how many sermons you preach, how many people you prophesy to, how many demons you cast out. At the end of all time, if you got a hatred in your heart and you're not forgiving somebody, you're not going to go where you want to go. So to me, it's a win-win no matter what they do to let it go. But on my own, I can't do it but because Christ is inside of me. I have the supernatural power to forgive anybody for anything. 70 times 7 in one day, no matter what they did, I got the power to let it go. So here goes the coach who did all of those things. But because love keeps no record of wrong, when I saw him, I said, hey, coach, how you doing? He said, hey, Rudy, how you doing? Now, mind you, he's almost like 80-something years old. So for me, to, for me to try to remind him, Coach, you had did it? Come on, man. Not to say that you can't do that, God tell you to make sure I say that right. God can tell you, you need to talk to him to make it blah, blah, blah. But, but to me, watch this, because I had let it go. That means it to me, because the Bible says when you forgive, he casts in the tears. So forgiveness, never to remember the lifetime of the one to come. So when you're walking in love, right, you, you're not bringing up, oh, he coached you, remember you? No, you're not bringing it up. Because Christ does it to you and I. We ought to be imitators of him. So why we can't love like that? It's because we don't want to. Now watch this. Through great preparation and diligence, my love matured to this level. Can I get a witness here? But, but, but watch this, because I wanted to. See, you, if you don't want to do this love thing right, you're going to always leave room for situations to slide in and say, well, I, I forgive for this, but I won't forgive for that. I forgive for this, but I won't forgive for that. But when you make up in your mind, I want to love no matter what they did, because I want to be like Christ. We said we ought to be imitators of him. I want to be like Christ. You want to be like everybody else. You want to be like Bill Gates. You want to be like Michael Jordan, but we don't want to be like Christ. He loved on that level where they did all of that to him and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do so you and I have that same type of level of love inside of us so when we don't do it it's because you don't want to but I'm intentional I want to do it I should say this I don't know if you remember y'all remember I don't even remember I used to say that when we men we and bishop and the biggest used to hang around I used to say this I don't know if you remember I used to say I want to do it and I'm going to do it hey glory to God you got to get what I just said I want to do it, and I'm going to do it. I want to walk in love. I want to let it go. So watch this. Because in reality, your true enemy is really you. Not the devil, because the devil is defeated. Yep. He said, the Bible said, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He's defeated. So he, the real enemy is you and I. You have to fight yourself to do what the word says. So when I saw a coach... It was as though he had never said or did anything wrong. Hey, Rudy, how you doing? How's the family? Da, 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 da. And some people he can remember. I see how coach, that's such and such, such and such, such and such, such and such. And if anybody, and they, now everybody know the situation. They were like, he talking to him like, yeah. But see, now watch this. Watch this, watch this, Apostle. Everybody on the team knew me at this point as a preacher, pastor, blah, 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 blah. So they saw you talking to Coach Erickson like that, da, da, da. They know the situation, huh? 
So now we interacting, talking back and forth. So the day of the actual game or that whatever, I brought Amber to the to the game thing with me. Now, like I said, she didn't know what was all of the background story. So he he like when we walk in, you walk in, they introduce you know if you come your kids or whatever say coaches my da 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 da. So um, but all the players, I didn't tell them all the players say that's that's Rudy's uh, daughter right da 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 da. He went over to her and said, this is a, he's a changed man. He's a changed man. Now, thank God he didn't tell her what her daddy used to do. So. <laughs> he covered me. <laughs> but he kept telling her, am I right? That we said, right? He's a changed man. But see, everybody on the team who knew the situation, including myself, if you remember, saw the love of God extended. See, we got to be intentional about this because lives are at stake and sometimes when you don't display it, I didn't say gonna be, I'm not going to give you all the blame now because God, because we ain't going to blame him. No human being going to stop you or be the reason why you go to hell. That's a lie. But you can be used by the devil as a tool to call somebody not to see God because you decided you're not going to let it go. But Coach Erickson, won't be able to ever say that because he saw the love of God in my interactions with him. And not too long after that, who, who, uh, 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 uh what you call it? Not DM me, but through a uh, messenger. Can I be your Facebook friend? Sure. Coach. Why? Cause love keeps no record of wrong. Amen. 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 I want to, um, I want to, and uh, Prop said something that's so powerful that y'all had to grab it. Prop said you can't do that without God. And that, what did God say on Sunday? He says, who, who is your number one? God is your number one priority. If God is not your number one priority, then love is not going to be your number one motivation, stimulation. God has to be your number one priority. And there is a, in, I, 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 I've been with Barbara for a long time. I've been, you see God prune people. You see he produces the fruit that are necessary to respond in a way I've given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. It is the fruit. That's why the Bible says, unless the branch is connected to the vine. See, people talking about speaking in tongues of signs. I said, I said, stop. I said, no. Go to the scripture. I said, let me tell you what the greatest sign is. He gave it. He's, it's, in, it's in John 15. He says, if the branch is connected, he tells us right there, if the branch is connected to the vine, it can bear much fruit. He said, then he says, if you bear much fruit, you bring glory to God. That's what the Bible say. You know what the Bible say? He say, if you, so you talk about speaking, don't get wrong, no. The Holy Spirit, I still believe the Holy Spirit can unction somebody speaking in tongues. And let me tell you why I still believe, the Spirit can unction somebody speaking in tongues, because it might be for you to be a witness. I mean, for you to be convinced. In other words, God may have you speak in the tongue of a language, and yet, why did he do that with you? Because you needed to know. You need, he did it for them to know, and you might need to know. So all of our, out of your mouth come uttering a tongue. You're like, what in the world? Like, okay. As the spirit gave utterance, it came out of you. Why? Because maybe who God wanted to convince was you. The same way he wanted to convince them in up a room, they heard the only, he might have wanted, I, you get what I'm saying? I know as the spirit, and nobody can, as the spirit give others to do, you don't tell, man, we got too many people who think they are philosophers, going to tell God what he can do, what he can't do. If he did it, he can do it. And what you need for God to see God, God do, who you going to tell God? Well, I don't think, I think you shouldn't do that anymore. I think you shouldn't, will it? Well, I, if I was you, I wouldn't want to be in a position to be telling God what he should do or what he don't do to, to get someone to understand if he takes somebody, if he takes somebody on 95 to get to 41, and he took you, just because he took you to 27th Avenue, don't go, don't go, because it's too much time we do it. Don't go preaching 27th Avenue to everybody. Y'all get what I'm saying? Just because he took you to 20, and listen, listen, I want to make sure I make this perfectly clear so nobody misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about transformation. Salvation, everybody needs Christ Jesus. He is the only way to salvation. Transformation might be 95, 75. And just because your transformation was 95, quick, somebody else's transformation may be 27th Avenue. They got to stop at a whole lot of stoplights. You know what I'm saying? 
And it's not for you to preach 95 as the means that God has no other means but 95 to transform someone. No, but, and that's why I'm being, but salvation through Christ is the only way of salvation through grace through Christ Jesus. But see, people, we, remember now, we so busy just preaching grace that the Bible said he was full of grace and truth. Remember, grace is the salvation. Truth is the transformation. Amen? Because you can't hear truth and not be transformed. Amen? So I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this and then we're going to go. Uh, uh, Prof, you, you set me up. You said, God, you just set, the set up where he's going next because why? The witness of it. Go to Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew 5, 13. Let's understand this. The subtitle, uh, as we go to 5, 13, we have to understand this because, and I'm going to tell you something, and Prof will be a witness to this. And people hate you because you preach love. They will hate. I don't have pastors coming. I'm like, are you serious? And then I heard one man of God come and tell me one time, yeah, they're over there and they preaching love all out of order. It's the word. I said, baby boy, I, I, no, I didn't say that to him. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I want to stay respectful. But he was in error. Because how do I know he was in error? Because the Bible, yes, the word, but look at the scripture. The Bible says God so Love the world that he gave his what? Only his son is the what? The word. Am I right on? So God so loved the, the word came from the motivation of love. So don't tell me word and me preaching word and your plot. And the problem with that, some that my man was, he don't understand the love part. So he think he can preach the word, God. And you think you got these people, they come puffed up with the word, got this wisdom and knowledge, but they but they miss the love part. The Bible, not me, the Bible said he so loved the world that motivated, am I right or wrong, what he did. So love motivated the word. The word didn't motivate, and word revealed the love. You know what I'm saying? Love motivated the word, and the word revealed the love. He said grace through faith. Amen? So love motivated the word to speak the word, but the words and actions revealed God's love. And we got there, right? So when we, okay, now let's read, watch this, watch this. This is 13. I'm going to give you the subtitle of 13 to go along with what Prophet was saying and go along with what God is saying today also from, well, from one from when we went to Acts and we went to receiving power, we went to awaking up. And why do we need the power? Why do we need to wake up and walk in truth and understand the love of God? Because of where we're going now. The subtitle is God's people make a difference. Look at somebody say, you are called to make a difference. When we preach the gospel, we, this is the classroom, all right, prof? We major, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, you come here to major in who? Christ. Our job is what? To labor that Christ may be formed in you. You, listen, there is not one person in this room on, I don't care if you on Facebook, I don't care if you on Zoom, I don't care how you listening, and, and, and all men and women of God are preaching this gospel, if they're preaching the gospel that's all over the world, the love of God and the power of God. Why? Because you have significant purpose in the body of Christ. God, people make a difference. You didn't get saved not to make a difference. God didn't save you not to make a difference. Don't let the devil lie to you. You are called to make a difference. Read it. Uh -huh. Watch this. Let's go. Go ahead and read verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Mm. You are the salt of the earth. Say it again. You are the salt Look at somebody of the say earth. This. Look at somebody say, you're so salty. you so salty. I'm not going to look up at that oh, tomorrow. So salty. <laughs> you, you are so salty. You're the salt. Let me tell y'all something. Salt though, is one of those seasonings that change everything it touch. Glory, hallelujah. I feel like prophet. Hey! <laughs> hey! Salt changes everything and it will overpower everything when it's not you it will preserve it change it, it salt ain't no light thing nothing to be played with it will change every if you put too much in the food whatever it can change god said that's you yeah 
test you. Yeah, we, cause we, you, come on now, y'all know, cause y'all generation use things like salty. No, y'all do. Y'all use things like you know, um, thirsty. But it's funny how you use these words, because it's fun. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm like, that's kind of interesting how this generation use certain type of words that if you go scripturally, be like, hmm, y'all even you too friendly. Hmm, y'all use type of words and the, and the subtlety and how you use them. Be careful. You are the salt. He ain't calling you salt and don't mean that you're not called to change something. You, for you to be, for you to have received a change <laughs> has now given you a testimony to bring a change. Amen. You ran into some salt. Come on, am I right? You ran into some salt. Pat, when Pat, that guy ran into some salt. Changed the whole atmosphere prop. Your coach ran into some salt. Changed the whole atmosphere. Changed it. Man, you could have drilled him. You could have went off in him. You could have been like this, brother. You, you changed. But the salt of God changed. God is looking for some daughters that can raise up. He don't, he not going to take away your figure, your beauty, but he done turned you into salt. So you ain't taking him to bed. You ain't serving yourself. You are changing an atmosphere. This is the gospel. He said, you are the, not, he ain't say you the salt of this opalaka. Am I right, Prof? He ain't say you the salt. Listen, he said, you are the salt of the world. The sons and daughters of God, you are the salt of the world. That's why you can't be limited to no or denomination. You can't be limited to no organization. You are kingdom bound. You are kingdom bound. You are representation of the kingdom. You have received power to be a witness of the love you have encountered. A love that you and I know we did not deserve. The Bible says he loved us. We didn't love him. Matter of fact, the Bible says we were enemies of him when he was showing his love toward us. But you ran into somebody who was salty. And they began to reveal to you the love of God. They were patient with you. They were long-suffering with you. Now watch this. They corrected you. They spoke the truth to you. God may have even used them to spank your natural butt. To rebuke you. And like I think Kenley said, and someone somebody said, and you acted like a child, and they still talk to you. They still was long. You know how I many people I have seen throw a fit and came. I tell people say, they be like, I love you, apostle. I said, You do now. You do now. But I'm not, I'm not gonna play with you. I've learned I love you. That's why I'm not gonna play with you. No, uh, 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 and I had to be pruned, and I'm continuously being pruned to bear more fruit because God, not because of me, because God wants glory. He says, when he pruned the vine, when we bear much, this is what the scripture says, when you bear much fruit, you bring much glory to God. That means he's producing who he is you and he's testing it as the prophet says he said think it not strange when trials come to try your faith the word they come by what yeah. hearing what so he says trials are going to test the word in you to see what if you can apply and function according to that word you read about forgiveness okay you think God ain't gonna test is he your number one priority after preaching it on Sunday? 
You think he, you actually think we preach this because it seemed like a good man? I don't preach things because they seem like a good message. I say, God, what do you want to speak? I don't study to get a message. I just study to know God and then be ready to give God when he wanted. it. He says, you are the light. You are the I'm about to show you prophetically what's going on right now wrong. Can you read it? You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor. Say it again. But if the salt loses its flavor. Could this be what's happening? Could this be why people are making light and mockery of the church? Could this be why nobody's afraid? Come on. Who? Come on now. God exposed it probably from a big. He exposed it from the highest platform of the nation. Who? Who? Somebody asked me. What president would have the audacity to what? Encourage a perverted day on the day. Even if the I'm not I don't care if you perceive it's not the day that Christ was what? Um he's resurrected. You may want to argue it's the day. Christ, you can argue dates and all the time. That's not the point. The point is, it was significantly for years looked at as a date of Christ's resurrection. Now, you can talk about, but so we have a president who says, I promise you all this. He not going to, and people are correct. He would not have done that to no Muslim nation. They would have, they, they would have, the would have been scared to death to do that. They wouldn't have done it to they want to do it. They want to do it to the Jews. And even though Christianity is out of Judaism, out of Judaism, it's an extension of Judaism. But why? And I said, that's what came to me. This scripture came. I'm just saying what God took me. He said, when the salt loses its what? Its salt flavor. Is, when it loses its flavor, when it has no power. Watch this. I've been here this. When it no longer is operating in the ability to influence. In the day of Noah, the church lost its saltiness. Am I right? In the day of Lot, the church lost its saltiness. Is God saying something to the church right now? You sitting around thinking y'all doing, you think you, you think you all this now? People, they don't care none of you. It ain't me. It's how you represent me. Has the church lost? You know, you got, we think it's funny. Did we let humor cause us to be sensitized to who God really is? Did we, did we actually watch uh, uh, a, 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 a man begin to create a show? And the man who created the show used the most, perver used the most perverted woman in the show to be presented as the godly person who couldn't even quote scriptures. And I'm saying, I look at myself, isn't what I'm saying? I'm even looking at myself back when I watched the movie and when I was younger and I'm laughing at him talking about Jonah, you know, Jonah in the whale. He making lightly, he think it was okay to make lightly of the word of God. And this heathen, the character he's playing is a heathen, but this character supposed to be, but well, many times he used his character to be the wise one in his, in his plays to present the word of God in a what? In a perverted and wrong manner? Did we, did the humor of it cause us to become desensitized to the God and who we both prioritize? See, what, wake up the truth. When you wake up the truth, no, you ain't gonna have nobody playing using God's word as, and twisting it to be making, no, it ain't funny. It's life. This is the same word that God says in Revelation. In, Re in the book of Revelation, he said, if you add to or take anything from, you'll be cursed with a curse. So what make you think any man to think it's okay to sit there and be clowning out of God's word. How we become so, maybe the evidence of that is how we love one another. Is this, isn't it so easy for Pat, we go on YouTube, you know, isn't it so easy for men of God to slander men of God? I'm not talking about correction. I'm talking about, you're going to think, because if you, come on, if, if, if you announce it loud and it's wrong, 
it's going to be corrected. Why? Don't take your butt on YouTube and start saying something wrong and think God ain't going to bring somebody on YouTube. Why? This baby's watching that. Oh, you're going to be openly rebuked just like Peter. Why? Because you're causing people to move. In a sort of, but you, but you got to watch how people do it. Because when you begin to do it in a way where you make mockery of the one who made the mistake and you saying, oh, T.D. Jake, and you like doing like this and you like that. No, God don't move like that. God will correct you. And the one he's correcting, he didn't even, he didn't, the Bible says he didn't even call Satan names. So that means God is not going to correct another man of God and then start mocking him. Or start making light of him or saying funny things like he a joke. I wouldn't do that. Because then it, seems, then it makes me appear you think it's about you. And not about God. I'm not going, I'm trying to be funny. But you might not want to say, y'all can say what you want to say. I'm, I'm not going to be saying, I'm, I'm going to say what's said, but I'm not saying it as I apply it. I don't think it's funny, and you might not want to think it's funny. Somebody's talking about Jake the snake. No, you might not. You might. If you have any wisdom according to the word at all, if you really, then you're not going to open your mouth like that. You wouldn't dare do it just out of the fear of not knowing. Even if he erred, you might not want to do that according to what you know scripture. No. David had the wisdom not to move in that manner. Jesus had the wisdom not to move in that manner. And you're supposed to be imitating him. So I pray that you would get the wisdom to not move in that manner. Back that, watch it, back that knowledge up. Have that knowledge motivated by love. Because love does not want to see that person destroyed. It wants to see that person corrected. You might be right, but if you create an atmosphere of doom, how can they repent? I'm not telling y'all from what I think. Remember, I told, God told me, I saw God, and God says, Psalms 107. When I read it, I was like, oh, I ain't touching that. Because God said, in one Psalms 107, God said, if that brother, if that man of God cry out to God and say repent, God says, I will deliver him. I said, Oh, so my prayer after that is God have him cry out. Because that's what love wants. Love don't want, love, love, the will of God's love does not desire to see none lost. God gets no joy, or God gets no joy out of seeing someone perish. If that's the fact, then why die? And you know, the scripture talks about the about uh, the, the, us being the salt and and the reason why one of the reasons why the they don't fear us because is this it's not that God is changed or he's gotten solved or he's changed no 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 he doesn't change but the here's one of the, I'm gonna say the only issue but here's one issue I'm gonna say as a whole and I can say everybody because I know I ain't compromising we have so many saints who are compromising in situations where they're supposed to stand mm -hmm. Stand so 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 watch this. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong. When you read the story about Shari, Meshach, and the beginning, that was an opportunity that was set by God to use the the Shari, Meshach, and Abednego to show these men are not compromisers. So what did God do? Because it could have been to God's glory they died too. Just want to throw that in there. Amen. But God decided this is the example of what he does when you stand on truth then God at many times will begin to show himself where the people with reverence and fear your God but when you and I as a whole I say everybody because I know I ain't compromising when we compromise why would God stand for us and we compromising why would God stand for us and we're voting for Obama and he has said I'll come to evolution and we got people because we got men of God. I'm just saying one second, I don't know black and white nonsense. We got people who are saints, who are hierarchy in positions in the ministry, who voted for Obama while he openly said that, I'm, I'm, that I come to evolution where anybody, where you can marry whoever you want to. What you mean? How are you in the kingdom of God and have the audacity to vote for somebody who openly says, I don't care who you marry? So why would God stand for us and show himself where they, where people begin to fear the God that we serve when we compromise? 
See, Daniel, when he stood, they knew that they, they were trying to set Daniel up. Oh, they set him up. But Daniel knew exactly what they were doing. He didn't stop praying to his God. God created the situation to show himself strong. So when they got to trick the king, but it really wasn't a trick, God let it go through. He and the lions then, when the lions have torn people up, he and they're sleeping on them. So God showed up physically, manifested his power to show the people, fear this God. And you know the story, when he got out of the lions then, the king made a decree that anybody say anything against Daniel's God. Come on, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Against Daniel's God, you're going to be thrown into the, into the pit. But see, when we compromise, God ain't going to show up and stand strong for us. So they, so they take us as a joke, but it, but it ain't because it ain't God changed. He's doing something different. It's us as a whole. We change where we're trying to become something that God said we already are. We're royalty. But we think by us partnering up with Beyonce or partnering with people who are, who are quote-unquote known on social media, they are somebody special. How is that? He made you and I kings and priests. If you accept the Christ, you are king and the priest. So what we do, when we get opportunity, we're supposed to go into, we're supposed to be the salt of the world. We get opportunity where God places in an arena to make a difference. We go into compromising. Well, I ain't going to really see none Beyonce because I want, I want her favor. How? Until she gets saved, she is an unbridled witch on her way to a burning, blazing hell. I say it until. So until Jay-Z gets saved, he is an unbridled warlock on his way to a burning, blazing hell. He can get saved, but until then, what, what am I going to be sweating him for? And you, let me say this right away. And what's chasing him is love. Go. But watch what Paul was saying is love is never separated from truth. Mm -hmm. And truth must be spoken regardless of repercussion. Regardless of what you, if people don't like you, reject you, despise you, truth must be spoken. That's right. Because where truth is not spoken, a person doesn't have an opportunity to see. That's right. So, again, before I sit down, it's us as a whole. He wants to show himself strong. He wants to show himself strong, but we compromise it. Saying stuff that God didn't say, doing stuff that God didn't tell us to do. So why would God stand up and show? Trying to find strength in trying to find strength in the way the world finds strength. There you go. So when we change, they're gonna start fearing us again. Yeah. They're gonna fear the God that you serve. There you go. And that word fear means reverence, honor, and fear. Fear for real. I mean fear as in fear for real, mm -hmm. but reverence. I can't, if, if Amber is hanging with some young ladies and Amber is talking and that's, and prophets her dad and, and Amber saying, get your blank, blank out. He know, dad, man, stop talking to me like this. Why would her friends reverence her, respect or honor her dad when she has nothing for him? Who she hang around in that atmosphere will watch how she treat her dad. If I never, if you never see her disrespect her dad, you see her submit to her dad, you see her humble dad, then you don't know not to step to her dad in a certain type of way because of what she, the, how she has reverence and honor her dad. Now, if you do step out of the place, it ain't gonna be because you didn't see it. It's because you just chose you want to be rebellious. So you want her dad gonna deal with you accordingly. But the bottom line. But when if it's if. That's your child, and that's your child, and that's your child. And as Prophet Barbara saying, remember, it, go, it goes back to what God said from the beginning. God is saying, um, am I your priority? Sure. If I am your priority, then people ought to see I am your priority. When, if I'm third, fourth, and fifth, or if I'm sixth, or seventh, or eighth on your priority list, why would you expect those who get to know me to think I'm, I'm somebody when you don't even think I'm somebody? When you don't think I'm the God that is able to save, save, seal, and deliver, then why would somebody who don't know God believe that he's a God that can save, seal, and deliver? Watch this, and I'll be finished. The apostles, when they left out that upper room, oh, they feared them. They respected them. They respected them, respected them because they were walking and talking as God, as what they learned. But see, Again, God ain't going to stand up and show. Uh, the Bible talks about us, us, the fear of the Lord will be on us and the people will be, the people will fear us. Well, why would he do that if, if we acting like them? 
If we talking like them, we compromising like them, we doing little shiesty deals, we doing things unscrupulous, why, why would God do? No, he won't do that. But until we stop compromising, they're going to still treat us, like, treat us like a joke. Amen? He says, if my people who are called by what? My name. Would, would humble themselves and do what? And seek his face. Go ahead. And it's also boldness. We don't have enough bold and boldness in our, our faith. Like we we walk around with our head down. Like we can't even disciple other people besides the church. Like in our workplace and anything that we do, like God cannot even use us because we're not even sensitive to the spirit to even hear him to like, okay, don't do this, don't say this. Like even today at my job, I've I've been having a lot going on with it's a new job. But it's like simple things as setting like principles. I'm not going back on that. And it's like God principles. And I'm set on that. It's not about a job. It's about like who I serve. I'm not lying for or sell. I'm not doing this because of this. And I let them know like my boundaries too. It's the way you carry yourself in the everyday life it's like how do you talk how do you move are you moving in the word are you being the word like are you being an example can god tell you to go talk to somebody and you will do it can you be bold about the god you serve and have faith that okay he's going to carry it out even if i'm scared or afraid like i feel like it's just us not being bold enough like okay i serve this god and not broadcasting how much we love him I love how you said that too, because I think even the world and their false ideal of love will sometimes stand and represent that in such a bold way. Man, that dude cheating on you, lying, I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? She sit there and boldly confess the love she has for something that is, has no nothing but the end of it but destruction. And God says, I'm looking for that. I also want to say this, that that boldness and that love is represented is that fear is also represented in that love in a sense of like this. Can he walk in the room because he is a person that walks and operates in love? Watch, I, watch how I fear him. I won't curse in his presence because of how he has carried himself and how kind and how, how the power that he has walked in in God and it's the way he's reverenced God. I, you, see, you ever hear somebody say, well, I'm not going to curse. Uh, I'm not going to have this conversation. I'm not going to. I remember my wife, the way she carried herself at work, that when they had a party, they feared her. You may say that. See, I think we have to understand when that word fear too. It is a fear of God beginning to understand that God ain't nothing to be played with, but it's also a fear of reverence. Fear is a respect and honor that. And that's what God is talking about too when it says the salt has lost its safe. They don't fear. You will be afraid to use God's name in vain around someone. Now the world, now watch this. They may do it among themselves because they don't know this God. But when you come in, too, remember he says that you are the God that makes a difference. You, I mean, you are, the, you are the son. You're not a God, but you are the children of God that make a difference because you're in fellowship with his love and your reverence and your respect and your love for God and how you talk about him and how you honor him and what he says. It begins to create a fear of someone speaking against your God or are moving against your God in a certain type of way because the fact is how you reverence it. And when I said, and those, and then Satan, he going to move too because he going to try, just like he did against Jesus. He, though, it, it will cause you to know who, whose side you're on. And then you're going to tell somebody, you gonna, oh, see, we won't have to wonder if somebody possessed or demonly move in, right? because when you begin to represent who God, that light, that darkness is going to kind of come, and you're going to be able to look at it right because they going to, and either, even others are going to be able to say, oh, it must, that, bro that brother must, let me show, let me go happen. That brother must be possessed about something. Why? Because that dude, that dude don't even act like that. Why is he coming at it? People, other people will talk for you and, 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 and feel because, you, because of how you carried yourself every day in life. And watch this, in the fruit and the love of God. Enjoy. That's a fear, too. That's a reverence and a fear of who you serve. You know, you're not going to, you ever, you ever heard somebody say, man, I'm going to tell you something. Don't talk about that. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't talk about that girl mama. Mama, I'm going to tell you right now, why? Because if you talk about her mama, she going all, smack all. Why? Because the way she has carried herself, and people have had her have conversations, even when it's wrong, the way she may do it in the wrong way, because Moses did it in the wrong way at first. Moses was slew a man and killed a man. He did it the wrong way. He had a passion for his people. He, he, he delivered them 
and the way he wanted to deliver him was the wrong way that God wanted that deliverance. You have to understand that reverent fear is a lot. Have, come on up. Uh, fear has a lot. People will talk about your husband a certain way, your wife a certain way, and, and your children a certain way. And it goes with prophecy. What goes with prophecy? You're not, you don't reference him. You don't respect him. You don't respect God. We don't, re we don't respect God. We, we have taken God like he a joke. So now the world say, okay, you don't take him as a, he's a joke to you. So he's a joke to us too. The woman, there was a woman, the woman called, what's her name? Candace says, she, the woman says, Candace, she said, Jesus is Lord. And they thought, and, 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 and the Jewish community, they thought they was like, they, they thought they had the right to be able to blitz that. No, you don't. I don't care how she meant that Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. So be afraid to be very afraid. And I mean, in a means of reverence and honor. But then I think what happens with Candace, I'm going to tell you why she, I think she got blitzed. She got blitzed because she said Jesus is Lord. But Candace is known more for a political view than she is for a Christian woman. I'm not trying to be funny. She is, she is known for her political views more than she is known for a woman of God. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it is it, it's wrong. I'm, the, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying. But 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 has she always? I don't. I'm just gonna say this. Has she always put God as number one priority? No. She has put her political views before God. So therefore, that and, that, and don't get me wrong. You can see her. I, she has grown a lot. She has matured a lot because Candace now will not. I mean, I'm just saying this. But as a person, she's not going to speak. She will speak against abortion. She will speak against certain things, and she will speak boldly against that. But also, I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. And, but I know she's maturing, and God has to mature because why? When Candace began, to, when the man, the Jewish man on the show that she was on, she kept saying something as a woman of God that God wants to mature. I mean, she was saying, "Well, they persecuted me. They talked against me," and she went back and forth with them. But as she matured as a woman of God, she would know she, God would not want her to do that. Just because that, that rabbi and his daughter were slandering her, she will learn as she studied the word more and more that God, the way she's responding to that, that's not the way God would want her to respond to that. That's just God would not want her to respond in the way she's responding to that. And God, I believe that God is going to teach her that because she's standing up for saying in Jerusalem, this is what she's standing up for. She's saying that that if you are the Jews, right, and, and don't get me wrong, let me, let me say this, I'm going to clear this up, then I'm going to let Jasmine speak. In, in, in Jerusalem, you are the people of God. Okay, if Jerusalem had really accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, Savior, then they would understand, even though the, who attacked them? It was the Taliban, right? The Taliban attacked them. They would, the Amman, Amman attacked them, but Samas, who did? Amas, Amas, oh, so, uh, Amas. I wanted to say correct, Amas. When Amas attacked her, that was wicked and evil. That was so wicked and evil in what they did to. The, I mean, that was it was crazy, nasty. It was the most wicked, evil thing you can do. But they can't go demonize a whole nation based on what that did and they can't retaliate and think well it doesn't matter that children are dying over there because if they believed in Christ they would know that Christ would not that God would not sign off of them not caring of the kids that's being destroyed in that they would know that God would God the God that they say they serve will not sign off on them I know the old I know the God when he said they, the God will after this and this and that but the bottom line is in that situation they can still attack you can still fight back, but be but care about how you are approaching it, that it won't be killing children. I'm not saying there's not going to be some cat. I'm just saying, but you don't want to take a bold stand on children dying as if that's just a casualty of war. When you know that your God doesn't think that way, that your God doesn't move. Because this is the God who sacrificed his son for a nation of people, for, for, for a world of people who hated him. So that would not be his concept or mindset in that situation. I just want to say, go ahead. Sorry, I feel kind of out of touch with um, some of the political stuff going on, and I don't know if you said it mm -hmm. or not, but um, I guess for the comment of like what you just said, that would apply for those that, like you said, know God mm -hmm. um, and actually, know him to the point that even like in the 
Bible, when Jesus did come, he said, if you, if, you know, basically like if God were your father, you would have received me, mm -hmm. um, talking to even those that were, um, Israel back then. Yeah. But I say that only because if they haven't transitioned to the accepting Christ part, there is a possibility that in their mind and heart that people could think they're doing the right thing, Correct. not knowing God, because, Correct. you know, like people pull from old stories and how mm -hmm. God would have whole nation slain and they would say you know you know in certain situations he would give the order to kill man woman child and to leave nothing you know no one alive but I, uh, obviously again i'm saying this is outside of the understanding of what christ came to do and you know him presenting the spirit. fact you're right he said it's the spirit because he told him he's a samaria you know not what spirit the spirit that's up on the land now it's the spirit of grace of right. god through christ jesus Correct. so that so you can't pull from there and think it's going to heal because you have to recognize what God, and that's the problem. You must recognize what God is doing now. Right. Amen. Right. Come Amen. On. And that, I guess for um, us, is just another point of discernment to know when people are speaking and operating where they are mm -hmm. um, for the fact of truth and also for prayer. And um, pivoting to the point that I wanted to come up on, um, touching on prayer, um, I know that our sister um, was mentioning about the boldness thing. And I'm not taking away from anything that was said. I'm adding to um, in the sense that I know in the book of Acts, it also talked about with the um, apostles when they had to ask for um, boldness and they had people pray, you know, with them that they may have the boldness. And it's actually in Acts 4, um, 29. And it just said, um, basically, they said, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants um, that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal, your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy um, servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they um, were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Um, and I only bring that up because. Um, Again, I agree with everything that was said, but I also do believe that this has been coming up. I know for me is about that whole like the ask seeking and knocking, you know, just getting back to the really like, you know, praying and asking, you know, for the for Holy Spirit and guidance and, you know, just to be able to I don't I don't know, like to to fill you basically with what we need for this time and um in this season and boldness. Yes, I agree. It's one of those things. But also, um, you know, just just really getting back to that place of like you said, making it a priority to commune with God and ask for those things that we need. And when we see a deficit in the body for boldness, that we also like we can pray for ourselves, we can pray for our brothers and sisters that God will encourage them in that same spirit of boldness. So that was it. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um. Yeah. And no, I just want. I was gonna say. Um. Uh. Just for um. You know. Even encouragement. Even when it comes to like boldness. Um. Um. We. I know we hear a lot. Uh. God allows prophet to say all the time. Like, reading your word. Um. And even kind of like Jasmine's kind of touching a little bit. Um. Even you see in the scripture about praying and all, and all that stuff. But it's, it's communion with God, reading your word, and knowing Him. Because the reading of the word and spending time with him is the knowing him. It's the process of we continually growing and knowing him. Um, because it's 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 very hard to be bold for someone you don't know. It's very hard to stand for something you don't even truly believe in. Like it's you how can someone, you know, how can we really stand um, you know, stand in the fire? How can we really stand up for something when we truly don't believe in it? Even even if we go all you know we we go bring all the way back to um you know early on we was kind of talking about um even what uh um Adina brought up um it, it becomes a lot harder to tell somebody something that you know they're not gonna like but you know God is telling you to do it and you know it's the word of God it's gonna be a lot harder when you don't really believe in it when you don't really believe in the one uh Jesus and the one who's telling you to say this or the word of God when it says 
you know, don't do this, don't do this. When you don't really understand it, you don't really believe it, it's hard to stand. So I, it just, you know, an encouragement to, um, when we say all the time, man, encouragement to get in your word, read your Bible, read your word, read your word, read your word, read your Bible, spend time with him, know who he is, know who he is. So even when you read the word, you could discern the word correctly. People read the word and, and that is just because you read it, that doesn't mean you know how to discern the word from the heart of God. Because you could discern the word from your heart and you think, you know, God is just here for your benefit, for you to gain things, or God is just here for, for, for you to have the best life. But that's not the case. God is, you know, he came that none may be lost, that we all come back to the Father. So it's just encouragement <laughs> to, to read the word, get in the word, spend time with him, spend time with him. And, and just, I think I was said earlier, intentional, be intentional. We say you want to do it, but be intentional. Even when it comes to we 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 come into service, we come into discipleship, and we you know we hear be intentional to come to learn, to to partake and to hear what God is saying and apply what God is saying. Being intentional, like not taking it for granted, um, because that's the key linkage. That's the key linkage to being bold. It's it's not just a it's not an overnight thing. It's not an overnight thing. But that's the intent. That's the linkage to when times come where where we're going to be, where we're persecuted um, on all sides. And they're going to say, okay, you know, what, what, what do you believe in? Or do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that it's okay to, to uh, murder a baby or whatever the case may be, anything it may be, but the boldness, you know, God wants the boldness to come from the knowledge of the word of God, but from a place of love. And we only could grow in love when we, um, you know, know his word but then knowing who he is so it's just encouragement to to stay in the word read the word and you know and also you know prayer is very important and if you need prayer you that's the point of coming to church or calling someone but it's just a a, a important thing of just being encouraged to get in that word because you get in the word you be rooted in the word you don't have to worry about compromising you understand it's not by might not by power it's by his spirit and and god is faithful to prepare each and every one of us for every situation. Back to the prophet saying, them them boys been in the word. They knew the like even what Daniel, what it was trying to set him up to not pray. He been doing this. He been doing this for time, from time past. He been. It's not just it. It just came and then. No, God is so good that he he knows how to prepare us. But if we not taking advantage of these moments in time of being prepared and and taking side deals or bucking the process, whatever the case may be. When the time comes to be bold, it's going to be hard to be bold because we was, how would I say, we were um, shunning God and what he was doing, what he was trying to do in us to prepare us and shape and mold us. So that was it. this was good tonight um what i got from tonight is basically um starting off with matthew chapter five was you know um as we meditate on the word of god and we continue to apply the word of god and what god has been doing with us is to spend time with him and we'll know how to discern and as we learn how to discern in matthew chapter five if you continue to keep going down chapter five it tells us to um love and do things without grudging so and the story of um, you start off with the particle son. So with the particle son, the love in there was allowing him to go on his own and go to the to wallow his waste until he can redeem himself and the redemption part of coming back to his family in love, right? Um, and sometimes we don't know how to say no because we don't have that relationship with God to know when to say yes and when to say no because sometimes. And spending time with God in that love of God, you will have to say no to let the person get to the end of themselves, right? And then the second thing is, as we continue to move forward in that love and the discernment of love, he says to not do it grudgingly. So sometimes he will tell us to go that extra mile for someone, right? Especially if it's not in sin, but that's also love because they'll get to see the love of God. And then finally, in 1 Corinthians 13, it breaks down love. So a lot of times we get caught up with religion and we're like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And then we, especially in the church, we start finding ourselves doing the works. But when we find ourselves doing the works, 
we can't apply the love of God, which is telling us to be transformed so we can apply those things, which is not an easy process, it's a tough process. I still find myself being tried in um, many of those areas um, and what it means and what it looks like to walk in love. But those are the things that um, allow us to persevere and move on. And as we're applying the love of God, the only way to do it in the discernment is to meditate on the word and spend time in the word day and night so that we can be transformed. And I know sometimes, especially at the beginning, it's really, really hard. But the more we're diligent with it, anything that we do, right? Um, I think they say that if a tw um, 21 days to build a habit. So anytime we do something and we start breaking the habit, that pulls us away from the word of God. And that's what the enemy wants. So as we start spending more time in the word of God, the bonus will come back. The, the, the fear for God, the reverence for God, and all of those things will start to come back. And that's it. And to break it, amen. Amen. Break it down. Come on. Is God your number one priority? Amen. And I believe God asking this question. So we, if he's not, he's not condemning us. He's saying, make me your number one priority. Understand what I'm motivated by. I'm motivated by love. Amen. My gift to you is salvation, eternal life. Amen. And I want you to understand something. There's no road that God can take you that that God is not taking you through that he already hasn't given a solution. God has the solution to death. He has given the solution to death in his son eternal life. So if he allows you to go into the fire, that's okay because he already has an answer to that. Amen? If you live or die in that fire, it doesn't change the fact that they, that fire was not, well, the Hebrew boys understood that that fire was not going to separate them from God. That lion was not going to separate them from God. And what we need to understand and why you need to become bold Whatever trial and tribulation you're going to go through on this earth cannot separate you from the love of God. Amen. God is good. All right. Lead us in prayer. Pray right here. Pray right here. Lead us in prayer so we can go home. Well,